Hey, we're in 15.3, and in this section we're going to be looking at sequential logic. And this section will be actually broken into multiple uh, sections. A sequential logic circuit can have a, any number of inputs and any number of outputs. Now, this is much like uh, what we discussed in combinational logic. A sequential logic circuit typically has some type of memory element to hold the state of the circuit. So here is a sequential logic circuit, and this is just an example. Uh, notice we have some combinational logic circuitry on both ends, but in between we have this memory element. And remember, this is what differentiates a sequential logic circuit from a combinational one, is the uh, presence of memory that can cause the um, uh, inputs and outputs to, um, well, in the case of, of combinational, as soon as you made an input, it immediately impacted the output. But with sequential circuits, you can change the inputs, and they don't necessarily immediately change the output, because there may be something going on in memory. Now, in memory, the whole idea of memory is that you're going to um, be uh, retaining certain states. And if you had, uh, note here, if you had one bit of memory, this would equate to two states, one high and one low. Um, that wouldn't be very much memory, but this, just for the sake of, of explanation, that would be the case. If you had um, four bits of memory, then there would be 16 possible states. And if there was eight, it would be 256, 16 bits, 65K, and 32, there would be uh, 4 gig. Now, the memory element also has a clock input which provides timing for changing states. Now, um, flip-flops can be used as memory elements, and they are important devices used in many digital applications, and they serve as building blocks for more complex integrated circuits. Two of the most common types of flip-flops are the D-type and the JK. Flip-flops can operate in two different modes. They can be used asynchronously, and they can be used synchronously. OK, first flip-flop we're going to look at is the D-type. And we have a schematic symbol down here in the uh, right-hand corner. And uh, let's look at the inputs. First, we have the D. That's going to be for data. Then we have a clock input. And then we have the set input and the reset input. Often these are indicated by SD and RD. And then we have two outputs, Q and not Q. And this is going to be my indicator here to make it a, um, a not symbol. And the Q and not Q, if Q is 1, then Q not would be 0. And if Q not is 0, then Q or Q is 0, Q not would be 1. So these will always be opposite each other. OK, these can be used in asynchronous operation. They can also be used in synchronous operation. So first of all, we're going to look at this device used asynchronously. So SD and RD are the asynchronous inputs. So you'll note here we go. Here we have the, uh, the set and the reset. They can override the timing of the clock. So when we get into synchronous, we'll find that we'll have a clock input, and it will be moving data through this device. Um, what the set and reset can do, it can override whatever is going on with the clock. The bubbles on the diagram indicate a low is required to activate the input. So you notice the bubble on the set and the bubble on the reset. What this means is that uh, in order for these to do something with this circuit, either perform the set or the reset function, it's going to be a low that's going to cause that to happen. It won't be a high. And so if we had, for example, if we had a high here and a high here, then the set and reset functions would be disabled. They're only going to be able to do something on a low. And so let's look at the truth table for this device. Uh, here we have inputs, and here we have the outputs. Now here we have, this is the set, and this is the reset. Now you'll notice 0 and 0, this, this is disallowed, because what this would do, this would be saying, I want to reset this, and I want to reset this. So this would be attempting 
to say we're going to have a high here and a high here. So this simply is not allowed. And so uh, the other three possible inputs are, are uh, allowed. Uh, notice here if we had a zero on set and a one on reset. Remember that the zero is going to cause it to uh, activate. So the zero here is going to cause Q to be high and it will call not Q to be low. Likewise, if we reverse that, have a one here and a zero on reset, it will do this the opposite. It will cause Q not to be uh, high and Q to be low. And if we had one and one, that would indicate that there is no change and that effectively is disabling the set and the reset. And when you run these in synchronous operations, this would be the settings that you would have on these two inputs. Okay, that brings us to synchronous operation. When set and reset are disabled, the state of the flip-flop is controlled by D and the clock. So let's put a high here and a high here and that will disable those. Okay, the greater than symbol indicates a signal must have a zero to one transition. If a bubble, one to zero. So we have this symbol right here, this little greater than symbol. And what that means is that, uh, notice it must have a zero to one transition. So what that means is we're gonna have a clock pulse coming into this device. And so what that means is on the positive edge, and that would be as the signal is going positive, that means that will be, that will dictate uh, when the transition points occur. And if we'd have had a little zero here, that would mean that they would, the, the transitions would be on the lows. So if, again, if we had the same signal coming in, that would mean that uh, it would trigger as the signal goes low. And this is often referred to as the edge. Um, because the, the, the timing is, is rather precise, and so the timing would either be on the positive edge or on the negative edge, and this one without the, this one was set up for the positive edge. Now, we also have a, oh, on our truth table here, we're showing what would we get if we had uh, outputs. Okay, notice N plus one indicates the next state after the clock pulse. So here we have uh, data coming in and let's pretend that um, this has been reset and if it's reset we'd have a one here and we would have a zero here. And let's pretend that we have a data element of a high right here. Now um, notice that the data element is a one but the Q is a zero because this is our input, this is our output. But the the output has not changed states because there has not been a valid clock yet. And so when we have this positive edge come in, then it would pass this data element to the output and then this would become a one. And so what this is indicating is if we had a data element uh, and if this had been a zero and then we got a valid clock, it would the, the output would change to zero but only after the clock pulse. And you notice that the Q naught is going to be the in whatever it is, the Q naught will be the naught. And then this is the one we just looked at. If it was high, then it would provide the, um, the high to the output. So um, that is a quick look at synchronous operation. Now here we have a um, question, and this question revolves around synchronous operation. This comes from an example in your textbook. And so here we have our little um, um, schematic of our D type flip-flop. So let's, let's draw a connection between Q naught and D. So we're going to make a connection between here and D and supply three clock pulses. Okay, so let's draw in three. We're going to have three clock pulses. One, two, three. Okay. Initially set Q equals zero. So if Q is going to be equal to zero, then Q naught must equal one. Then the question is, what is the state of the flip-flop after three pulses? Okay, after three pulses. So let's look at the state of the flip-flop as we start. Now it has been reset, so Q equals zero, and this is going to be our clock right here. I'm going to put another 
this is going to be Q's output. And at the, initially, we have an output Q is uh, zero. So this is our starting point right here. And then we're going to supply three clock pulses. And we're going to evaluate where is this at after three clock pulses. So we come in. Uh, we, we, here we have a positive edge. And now note that this is zero, but Q naught is one. And Q naught is up here, so actually we have a one at this point. So at the clock, the data that's on uh, D will be passed to Q, so that will make that go high, and it will make this go low. So our output from Q at this point goes high, and it's going to stay high. Now it's going to stay high until there's another clock. Now depending on what's in D, uh, will determine where that output of Q goes when the clock occurs. So uh, now notice that at this point, Q naught, we have a high on Q, but Q naught is low. So the low, now instead of having a 1 here, now we have a low. So now the clock pulse comes in, and now the 0 is passed to the output. So now we have a 0 here and a 1 here. And so at this point, we go low. And it'll stay low until we get to the next clock pulse. Next clock pulse, Q naught is supplying a 1 here. So now we have the incoming clock, and it moves the 1 to the output, and so it goes high. And that is the end of our problem, because our question was, what is the state of the flip-flop after three pulses? And so here we had 1, 2, 3. And the state of our flip-flop is that it is high after three pulses. OK, this is one use of a D-type flip-flop. This is not the only use. And this is a, you know, this we, we uh, wired this so that Q naught went over to D. And like I said, they're not always done that. But this is one example just to uh, show you how these work in synchronous operation. OK, so in this section, we looked at synchronous operation. We looked at the. Um, uh, the inputs and outputs that we would have. We also looked at the asynchronous operation. And this is where we would use the set and the reset. And remember that those would be lows. Remember that these bubbles will indicate uh, that a low is what would activate the uh, condition. And we briefly introduced flip-flops. And we briefly introduced the subject of sequential logic.